but it's coming out of very wild who has chosen green has his color this this time round. maybe didn't want to do teal for the water but we're gonna make him yellow again um so very players portuguese we've discussed them already but they are good on hybrid maps um this map can be fully walled as well you can wall yourself in nicely with the trees and we've got gamers dc playing as the aztecs again can wall in pretty nicely um aztecs on this interesting i mean all the relics are in the middle all five of them if you get control of the middle grab these relics aztec monks are really good aztecs also get 33 percent gold income from relics so it's a lot of gold that they could benefit from plus the monks get extra five hp for every monk research you get so if you can get some monks rolling you can be good so let's each take the clockwise pawn says elevid i wonder if that will come to fruition as franks has been his civilization of choice franks gather from berries faster um, normally berries are the slowest form of food income but with the franks bonus they are just slightly faster than heritables i think with a 15 percent faster work rate they also get free farm upgrades so horse color heavy plow um, comes in for free It's worth noting that Aztecs do produce a slightly faster as well. Their military gets made faster and their units carry plus three resources. I think that they made, what, like 11% faster? It used to be way higher. But on water and 1v1s, that can matter. Because if you're getting a second fire ship out before your opponent by 11%, it can be game-changing. So... Yeah, we'll have to see. I'm all coming out relevant. Pretty early. It's not that early. I'm really late with my mills. But three on wood suggests we will see some Frank Scouts rather than an FC. Two on wood for Ferry. Suggests that he's going to be taking berries and using the wooden kim for Portuguese there to help him out. So he just about gets that ball all done. Neatly under the town center. And Gamer already starting to wall up the back of the base. I do like that. His main gold is very forward, though. Very forward. Compared to the two players who have super back golds. I mean, the secondary is attainable, I guess. But it's already docked as well. So you can see already just the build order being so much better for for gamer compared to the other two guys who maybe aren't as familiar with water or hybrid maps and yeah he's already out here adding in fishing ships gathering shorefish and his economy is just gonna be so much stronger so a couple minutes left on gamba guys second ball pulled in for elevid i wonder if we'll see any walls coming out of these guys elevid again nice wallable base wall here Wall to the front, wall to the front, even wall to the pond. Not as nicely wallable as the others, I feel. Would have to come all the way out of here. And then maybe down. Yeah, not not as nice. This side's nice, but the rest of it is kind of open. Because it's not really having that issue. And yeah, mill in the middle for Elevid says, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip pond. Now, I like this from Fairy. So I don't think that's, that Fairy is like trying to instigate a battle. But at the same time, Elevid's the one on two points. So when Elevid suggested we all take a clockwise pond, and Game was like, yeah, sure. Fairy didn't say no. He didn't say yes either. He didn't give like a false impression that he was going to, which is totally fine, by the way. He was just like, okay, sure. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take an anti-clockwise pond. And I'll fight Elevid. I'll, I'll keep him on the back foot. I don't mind. Again, game is still on zero points. Fairy can afford for Gamer to win a, a game. He cannot afford for Elevid to win a game because it will be over. It will be Jova. It will be Ice Cream Club Soda. But look at the eco count. 26 to 19 to 21. Ugh, game is just so good on these hybrid starts. And... The argument for gamers that his best map in the game is Four Lakes, and Kawasan definitely plays similar. 
So, yeah, it does definitely uh, lend itself to his capabilities. We see Field Lays coming in for Elvid already. Being that he didn't dock, that makes sense. And yeah, we are going to see some early scout play. And when Field Lays arrives, Gamer says, yep, I'm going to need to put a barracks down, get a couple of spears, because that's Franks. Whilst Franks do get fully usable crossbow, it's probably going to be scout, especially with that kind of up timing. I was a, a 19 villager up, so seeing villagers like that is unusual. Um, archers like that is unusual, unless you're playing against somebody sweaty like me. Very wild following suit, hitting the feudal age. Late to gold, though, so won't be a quick FC. He did wall in as well, I like this, and adding one fire in, which will prevent Elavid from getting water control to the south. He also didn't find these two turkeys. That's really unlucky for Elavid, look at that. Either side of them, one tile away, the geese shall live. Game is going to continue to scout this pond, and currently, Elavid, who has scouted this pond, say, hang on, there's nobody here, what's going on? I scouted my pond and there's nobody there. I found Gamer's dock, so... Fairy should be in that pond, but he's not. So either Fairy's also gone to the middle, or, and, and or ignored water, or alternatively, Fairy's came and docked this pond after I scouted it. Interesting. And Elevid again, knowing the situation in terms of the score, despite Gamer being maybe stronger on this map, thinks, well, I have to I have to aggro Fairy. He's on a point. I want to wanna put him on the back foot. <clears throat> I want to keep him pressured in. And the berries run out. Some farm's going to be added in. Wouldn't hate stone balls on this map from any of the players. I think I would like stone balls on this map from the players. Let's double range now for the Aztecs. Oh. Not even attacking Bills. He's just right clicked the farm. Quick walls on the wood line. Spears are following these villas that were on the berries. Need to do something else that isn't chasing scouts. See Franks get a bonus health on the cavalry units. <clears throat> but don't get access to wood lines as a result. And where is Fairy going here? Is he going to the other pond? I wouldn't hate it. Or is he just going to go mill the middle? Oh, wow. He's milling the middle. I don't know how I feel about this. I feel like a mill here would be better. There's more berries. I don't know. Galley Alpha Gamer as well. Making sure that Elevators get onto this pond. Now, I get it. He's gone. You know what? I'm just going to play Franks. I'm not going to contest water. I'm going to use the extra fast income on the berries in the middle to make up for not, not using water. And and then it's fine. I don't need to worry about trying to play hybrid against these guys. Problem with that is the berry number is finite, whereas fish traps can be made forever. Um, your village account still will be lower overall. And uh, on, on top of that... You can't guarantee that you're going to be able to hold the berries in the middle. Like The longer this game goes, the worse this gets. There's a lot of berry food here. It's 10,000 of it. It's a lot of food. One speed in. There's not a defensive army make against Frank Scouts, though. Fairy's own scout is going to spring into action. Oh, a spear from Elevator will venture forth to join the fray. Might call the scout away, use the villas to kill the spear, use these villas to kill the scout. Loses one villager, loses his scout as well, but all in all, not too bad as the reinforcements arrive from home. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if Fairy or Gamer come out to this pond. Being that Fairy's not fully walled yet, there's more chance of him doing it. Gamer has shut this area off, says, no way, Jose, I'm not interested. Gonna finish his full wall soon. Can't afford to click up, but missing a building needs either a blacksmith or a market, or even a... Well, you can't make a stable, so blacksmith or a market are going to be needed here for Gamer in order to click up. And that's the blacksmith just being built, so to the next age he goes. Very wild, also ready to go up. Um, 
And yeah, there he goes as well. So Elevid, the one who skipped water. The one who made scouts. Not quite there yet. Not quite there yet. I'm surprised nobody picked Persians here. I think Persians may have been better than Franks here. Although I, I get why you've done it, because you don't want to play water. If you wanted to play water, then Persians are definitely better, but... The thing is, you're not going to get in on Gamer. Not with Scouts. And now he's adding another layer of wall behind that layer of wall, and... It's going to be so difficult. Singular Archer has been thrust out by Elevid to uh, deal with Spears. And good reaction from Fairy Wild says, you know what? More archers are likely going to follow that one archer. I'm going to get the tower up here. Needs to get it up and then wall it in. Or actually just wall it in now and then force it up. Wall it in, wall it in, wall it in, wall it in. Pack it up, pack it in. Let me begin. Wall it in. Okay. Yeah, delete that. Bring your bows out here and then build another house here. Or something like that. He'll make it work. He'll make it work. And the uh, army from Gamer is finally showing its head. Showing its face, rearing its head. I guess. How was, um, how was the family dinner? Was it yummy? What did you get? Did you get steak? Did you save me some? Was it nice? Very well, his castle age. Two knights immediately queued up. Out of the middle, pushed Elevid shall be. He's going to try build a new mill and then take more berries. But like I said, the longer you're here, the worse it gets. Fish being uncontested is nice for the other two guys. But you've got to have a strong control over the center in order to be able to get all these berries. Especially considering two players could be here and two players are indeed here. The tower actually protecting uh, Fairy Wild from Gamer, not from the initial assailant, which was uh, Elevid. But not fully walled in means that it can be poked down. Of course, there's a spear in here he could kick out that help a little bit. Good amount of archers here from uh, Gamer. And yeah, monks. Here come the Aztec monks. They're going to start trying to snag these relics. Stone walls from Fairy. I really like this. I mean, pond's not being contested. Why not use the pond as part of your wall? Come out here and stonewall this as well. And then, sure, it's a bit annoying that you've maybe lost control in the middle or lost your presence in the middle, but it's being, it's being felt right now. Who has two wins? Elevid. Elevid's two, Fairy's one. No, oh, I don't. I don't like tacos. Oh, oh, cake. No ballistics yet. Two, uh, two cavalry armies out there. Ballistics would be on my uh, priority list. Oh, and Elevid tries to build a dock, but Fairy Wild's here with the, with the fire and says, nope. Um, and the villager dies. So, build down and a dock down. It's 150 wood there if he doesn't delete. If he does, it was 30% built, so he'd only get like 110 back anyway, something like that. But he does delete it. And yet, we'll be forced to retreat from the center. He did get a good number of food from Berries, though. He cleared out this... This entire section over here. And Spearman's going to try to stop that monk. Say, hey, put that relic down. What are the upgrades looking like for Fairy on the Knights, though? Okay. No attack upgrades for plus two armor. It's not bad. Scouts from Melvin need to come in and deal with the monks. I don't know if they will. They spot it. They spot him. They run away. He realizes he just sends the one. And pulls it back. Says, nope. Don't want to throw it. Third layer of wall for Gamer this time. It's stone wall. It's still open here, though, so just to fix that. 
Look at the population. 56, 67, and then game away out on 88. Yeah, so there has been a little bit of chatter between the guys. The most we've seen so far in the finals um, as the walls have just about finished in time for Ferry, which I'm sure he'll be very happy about. His fire ship did get picked off, though. Um, but this one's been a little bit quieter. This one's been a little quieter. A new follower. Forgive my son. Consider your son forgiven as far as I'm concerned. Thank you very much, old follower. Welcome on into the head. Hope you had a fantastic weekend. We're taking you into a Monday with some fantastic Age of Empires T Definitive Edition gameplay. We've got the Division 3 Sudden Death Showdown Finals here. It's a three-man free-for-all between the first and second place finishes of the group stage, Gamer STC and Elvid. Um, and Ferry Wild, who was the winner of Division 4, who also gets a free ticket into this final as well. And man, what a game, what a set we've had so far. Two games to Gamer, uh, to Elevid, sorry, one to Ferry Wild and zero to Gamer. But here come the Monkeys, here come the Eagles, here come the Crossbows. And using Monks to convert fishing ships may not be the follow up Monk gives you PTSD. Oh, really? And here comes the j Rod as well. Convert the fish is one way of stopping him from fishing, I guess. And now I've got Redemption and Convert the Dock. And hey, you've got fish in two ponds. Barry's done a good job of using both ponds for fish, though. The Frankish light cap is still running around. Something that both opposing players have to be aware of. Why is it humping so much? Wait, what's humping? You mean thumping? I don't know. Banter. Defensive castle on the northwestern side of his base. For Fairy Wild. Scared of the archer eagle mass over there. Lycav gonna dive the middle and Fairy will not be enjoying that arrival. Some spears and knights are there to defend and, and see the Lycav off, but... Village is being picked off. It's never a good feeling, especially when they walk out like willingly into the army. Is this the right play from Gamer though? You've got to think. Elevate's already on two wins. Elevate's already on two wins. Do you really want to do this? I feel like this this may be a misplay. I game is not really seen anything from Elevid in a long time. And it's Franks. It's not like they have a bad eco. Free farm upgrades. Their eco's gonna be doing pretty good. Two relics there. No doubt Fairy wants to... Fairy. Gamer wants to grab them. More knights pop out. Eagles are acting as a front line for the crossbows. Having all these relics and with that Aztec bonus does mean that double gold comp is an option though. <laughs> he converted the market. What an asshole. I love it. Mike, I'm still on patrol. He could actually convert the tower here. That'd be pretty funny. Monks 55 health. Mm, one of the monks dies though. And Elevate says it's about time I go into this game. And it's going to drop a castle on the pond. Whilst also a castle in the middle for Gamers DC. Wants to solidify his position there. So, if I'm fairy right now, make a monk, pop out these relics, run them home. Because this is clearly a target point. And yet, there come the relics. He should have waited until they had the monks first. Now you can't put them back in. And you're just not getting gold. Okay, he has a monk here. Okay. 
I can press the on garrison button, but you can do them one at a time. Hundred and fifteen pop for gamers DC. Seventy four economy units. Ten above the next closest, which is Elvid. <laughs> Golly hitting a like have like have eventually dying. Fishing traps being added in. It takes a lot of APM for them to be added in well. And they're rather than good. Not perfect, but good. Gally gonna deny the stone wall placement as well. Apparently it's late for a lot of these guys. Oh my god, is he gonna transport petards? Bro. Oh the fish are gonna spot it though. Well I mean the fish are gonna see it doesn't mean Ferris looking at it. Right now he could potentially be looking here, he's trying to get his walls up. Elevid, bro. Reinforcements have arrived. Hey, Jow. Thank you very much for the raid. Apologetic raid. I hope the... Uh, I hope the coach cast was, was good. They usually are fantastic, so... Right yeah, yeah. Well, I think one of the major issues with Mustang's economy is he, spend, he, he struggles spending wood, and right now he doesn't have horse collar. And he's trying to 3TZ boom, adding a bunch of farms. Oh, that was survivalist casting with you with Mustang versus Roko. That was a really good set, actually. But yeah, welcome on in Raiders. We've been having a fantastic set of games, honestly. Currently, standard at two points to Elevid, one to Ferry Wild, the underdog from Division 4. A new and thank you, Deneb. And zero points for Gamers DC. And what we're currently seeing is Petards in a transport ship with some knights. To come and potentially snipe a TC. Farewell is slowly getting some walls up to defend. We've got Aztecs in the middle who currently have been trying to collect all the relics. They only have three though. Fairy snuck the other two back out. And there's a lot of posturing happening here in game four. You can have that house, Riz. <laughs> Gamer says thanks. Full control over the middle for the Aztecs. He's got war galleys on the side. He's got stone walls at home. Fish on the right. He's got fish on the left. This was all converted from fairy, by the way. It's not King of the Hill, no. No. But it is Sudden Death. Sudden Death Showdown. Five petards. Fortified walls in for very as well. That's a really smart choice. Very efficient technology. Um, when you're doing stone walls with villas, by the way, guys, they don't build any quicker, really, with an extra villa on. So just put them on different pieces each. And yeah, I see fairy like trying to do that a little bit here and there. The spears find the petards. And now we get all your guns out. And the thing is, as well, Fateria are an option. Again. CJ would have been in Division 4 finals, but he didn't make Division 4. He, he didn't make the finals for Division... Oh yeah, it would have been Division 3. Yeah, but he didn't make it. He didn't make it. My apologies. CJ only won one um, set in his in his group. Yeah. Only won one set in his group. But it was a tough group, though. It's Elevid, Gamer, Kansky, Duke Canada, Jam, and CJ. Yeah, good walls by Ferry will stop the Petards getting in. Um, no, you're right. Uh, Petards can knock in the Siege Towers because they count as a Siege unit. So yeah, it was a tough group. It was a tough group. It was a close group. The closest group we had. As a... I'm, I'm questioning this for a second time. Gamer yet to have a point on the board. Elevid has two points. Why are you hitting Ferry Wild? It doesn't make sense to me. He's the lowest score... Elevid only needs one more point to win. And you're like, I know. I'll fight the yellow guy. It doesn't make sense to me. Surely you go and kill the guy who's already got two points. Who has an unprotected TC. And is still in Castle Age. You could just walk over and kill this. And Elevid realizes and that says, fuck, this Treb's out. <laughs> 1200 really gets under your skin, huh? <laughs> now, obviously, they don't know that the other's attacking. But 
that may give them a bit of a hint. Diplomacy is completely permitted. You can't actually change teams, but there's nothing stopping you from talking in chat as long as every player can see what's being said. It has to be public chat. Wow, this light cap's gonna break in, I believe. Army at the gates. Army at the gates. I don't know why Fairy Wild is the one being targeted here. It doesn't make sense to me. I understand Elevate hitting him. Because Gamer doesn't have any points, so fo focus Fairy Wild. Sure, makes sense. But Gamer sending everything here? I don't know. I, it just it feels strange to me. Maybe he just feels like Aztecs will beat the Franks in the late game, so isn't scared of it. Maybe things... I mean... Zen with another 5 gifted. Thank, thank you, you very line. much. I appreciate it. Maybe just thinks... I mean, Franks aren't even in a parallel age yet, so they're not a threat, but... Come in. Take a seat by I don't get line. me wrong. I think Gamer wins this game. But I, he doesn't know what state Come Elevate's in. in. For all he knows, this fucking... There's 70 Cavaliers sitting here, right? Like, he doesn't know. Come in. Take a seat by the fire. And, I mean, what what does Ferry do here? He needs to talk. He needs to talk. He needs to be Come diplomat. In. He needs to be like, hey, fire. gamer, remember, the guy in the red, if he wins this game, he wins the set. Right? You need to start talking. I would. I'd be telling him. I'd be like, yo, bro, like, quick reminder, by the way, costing yourself the set, potentially. Does that mean that Gamer will turn around? Not necessarily. D do I think Gamer will win the, set any the, the game anyway? Yes, I do. But man, if I'm fairy, I definitely start talking. Because now he just dies. Good morning, Sip. Yeah, not really much he can do there. It's a 45 minute TC kill. That will alert Elevid. And now. Good job, Elevid says. Now, there's no way out, though. Oh, there's a hole. He's bent a hole. I was going to say, because he needs to get home. Just you and me now. I just don't understand why he's focused on Fairy Wild. It's crazy to me. Paired the hole and then blocked it, yeah. We've seen a similar thing in Division 4 where um, Soko focused down as a century when Fairy Wild had two wins under his belt and only needed one more. So it just, it seems wrong. But uh, see, so. Garland Wars is a thing that you can get. You see the pack would have plus six attack. Because they get um, plus five attack from um, for their infantry units, which is great. But you don't get Halberdier. And you're against the Franks. You're against the Franks. Yeah, I mean, it's still going to be tough for Oliver to stop this push. Game is 110 military, like 83 eco. Like, he's got 52 pipe, 55 piping on the field. He is stacked and, and ready to rumble. I said this was definitely his map to win. It couldn't have come at a better time, but... Why take that risk? It's always going to be my question. Always going to be my question. If it doesn't run too late, I would like to try to get the guys in and ask them a couple questions about the set. But it might end up running too late, but we'll see as the Cavalier tried to die. Pikeman here to defend Monks as well, and we're getting a little bit of lag. Mother of Macro. What, the Trebs can kill this castle from the hill if Gamer pays attention to them, but deleted house by Elevid, very smart, allows the Cavalier to escape the pikemen and maybe gonna look for a dive, but the game is still full walled, I think. I don't think there's a hole here. There could be a hole here. Don't be a hole here. Please. Oh no. It's Paladin. It's Frank Paladin, bro. Oh my god. 
Luckily, this is a fully stocked castle. Two fully stocked castles. And you know what? The paladin's not stifling the trebs. I also think a bit of a misplay. You should have left some of them behind. Because they're just slowly being whittled down. And that's a lot of res he's just spent on, on the paladin upgrade. Bro, the arbs can range the TC without being in range of the castle. But the trebs can also range the TC. There's a monk here to convert the paladin. A lot of light cap being pushed out. No horse are available, of course, for the Franks. The Paladin are coming back around on the flank, though. Pikeman, of course, not on horses. It takes them a little bit longer. Repairs coming through. The TC stays alive for now. The Arb Mass still stands as well, though. So, despite the Trebs falling, the military for Elavid has been decimated. Down to eight military units. Soon to be seven as a, another Paladin runs away. Now, Aztec Paladin. That is a terrifying idea. Um, thank you, Elavid, says Gamer. And he said, yes, of course. House will fall. Eagles can run in now as well. The game says, now I have to play more. Smiley face. More trebuchets starting to trickle forward. Look at the fish boom and everything from this guy. I said Kawasan was gamer's map to win. And fucking hell. Did he prove me right? BBC have been added in. Eagles pouring through. Arbs in the eco. Castles dying. Treb unpacking. Only a matter of time. But Elevid embracing his fate. Allowing it to happen. Realizing there's not much he can do. And Gamer is DC. Takes game four. Putting him on the board for the scores. With a stellar performance. I have to say. Absolutely fantastic game from, uh, from Dylan. To put himself on the map there. And wow. Yeah, I questioned the decision to kill Porto. Maybe he suspected he would have struggled more against Porto with Aztecs. Because, like, I guess mass organ gun kills pretty much anything Aztecs can do. They don't get SO. Or do they get SO? Yeah, they do. They get SO. But then BBC and becomes a whole micro thing and maybe thinks he'll get out micro by that. So, I don't know. Either way, it gets the game done. It gets the game won. So, you can't really argue that much, can you, son? As Dylan makes a 2-1-1. Not willing to give it up just yet. And boy, oh boy. We're moving on to migration. Okay, man. I'm excited. I wonder what kind of sibs are going to come out now. wonder what kind of sibs we're going to get now. Saracens haven't been touched by anybody yet. Italians have been seen to be played here. Byzantines yet to be seen here. We'll have to see what kind of civilizations, civilizations the guys are going to look for. I do have a lobby code. They will be starting shortly. Let's see if they want to take a few minutes between the game. That's fine. Currently still standing with a 32, a 33 minute and 32 second TC takedown is um, Gamer's DC. So he has the £10 bonus bounty currently. The other £90 still to be decided by who can get the three map wins first. See, Elevid currently closest to that. But like I said, this is where it gets tricky for Fairy. The more water and stuff gets involved, the harder it is for him. I feel like he's not really a water slash hybrid player. He doesn't have the experience in playing the game like Elevid and Gamer do. So the further we get into this map pool, the way the maps have came out, the, the more difficult it may be. You could be in my time. Thank you. And then you've also got to consider fatigue and consistency. I said it, first, first three games, Fairy Wild was amazing. Game, game one, two, and three. 
Fairy Wild was not a 1200 player with 1500s. Fairy Wild was a 1500 player with 1500s. He played tremendously well all three of those games. Can you keep that up though? Can you consistently perform 300 ELO above your average? Because that's tough. That's fucking tough. Especially in a, in a pressure situation. And especially with this one in the line. Alex, you ever burnt a candle but only targeted the wax and left the wick untouched? Hmm. No. <laughs> 22 months. Thank you very much, Callum. I really appreciate it. <laughs> We're having a toilet break, apparently, because all the water my players made somebody need to go to the wash closet. And I should pour myself out another glass of water as well as we go on to game five. Man. People questioned it, you know. They questioned it. They said to me, how's that free-for-all thing going to work, though? In sudden death as well? Like, free-for-alls can go on for ages. And, like, there's going to be a big ELO disparity. And you're going to end up having, like, 12-hour streams to the finals. I mean, potentially. It's potentially going to happen. But, man... This game started just over two and a half hours ago. Actually, almost about two and a half hours ago. And we're already four games through. 